enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people, and neither do we. Thank you. <laughs> dude, I love George W. Bush so much, dude. This guy's literally the best president that's ever existed. You know, some people will be like, oh, Bill Clinton was pretty cool. He played the saxophone. Or some people are like, oh, my God, Donald Trump, he put the MAGA hat on. And Obama, listen, Obama's a close second. I'm not going to lie to you. You know what I mean? I had the Obama shirt. You know what I mean? I repped Obama. But at the same time... What do you remember from the Obama administration? Like, all I remember was him wearing that tan suit and white people losing their mind. That's it. That's all I remember. And, you know, also using drones to blow up Pakistanis, but I support that. But with George Bush, there's, like, so much to remember. And now, the reason why I'm even going down memory lane, because, you know, it's good to be nostalgic, is I was actually looking at gas prices recently. I was looking at the inflation rate, which is 8%, by the way. At this point, when I get my paycheck, I literally just chuck it in the garbage. There's no point in cashing it. Uh, as well as gas now being worth more than my life ever was. I mean, it was technically worth more than before, but either way, it's very expensive. Uh, and I was thinking, damn, yo, this is bringing me back. This reminds me of the Great Recession. Now, the Great Recession, if you don't know, is basically a period of time where we... De we it was technically a depression, but Americans were so proud. We're like, nah, this is just a recession. We're good. Don't worry about it. Um, also, conveniently, at this time, millennials were graduating from college and entering the workforce that didn't want them. That was really cool. Uh, but thankfully, during this recession, as well as this current economic turnover, I am still dead broke. So, you know what I mean? Like Game of Thrones says, what is dead may never die. I'm broke. You know, how am I going to become more broke? You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, this whole period is dominated by the recession. You know what I mean? The economy. Uh, that's hilarious. Dude, Young Jeezy literally made an album called The Recession. Like, that's how bad the economy was where rappers were just talking about it. That's nuts. Um, but all in all, during this period... The person you had to look forward to and the person you had to, like, hope had the answers. You'd be like, yeah, hopefully this guy gets us through this. Hopefully he's our leader is George W. Bush. And what's crazy is that I feel like during George W. Bush's presidency, this was the first of a time I've ever seen during a presidency where you the American people were truly united. Like, everyone was like, dude, George W. Bush is literally retarded. Like, he never says anything right. He never does anything right. But for some reason, everyone kept voting for him. Like, during the first term of his presidency, people were like, damn, George Bush is literally stupid. Like, why? Like, what is he saying? What is he doing? What is this old no child left behind act? But then, I'll be honest with you, right? What ended up happening is that under George Bush's uh, command, the United States of America was attacked on September 11th, 2001 by 19 smelly individuals who flew a plane into the Twin Towers and he kind of became the de facto leader because during his re-election, no one wanted to vote for John Kerry because they thought he was too weak on foreign policy. And some way, somehow, George Bush, like, I don't know what it is, but he, like, he was such a... Dude, it's cool. Like, first of all, before anything, all right, you got to see how George Bush handled 9-11. Because when 9-11 happened, he was in a schoolroom... Okay, take notice that the Secret Service guy at that point in time came up to George W. Bush and was like, yo, there is a terrorist attack in New York City. The Twin Towers have been hit. At least one of them at this point in time. And also the Pentagon. The Pentagon was in on this day as well. I don't know if this happened by the time George W. Bush heard this. But the Secret Service guy was telling him that. And George Bush continues to sit there, right? Like, in his head, he's just thinking. He's like, yo, are you kidding me? Like... Are, are you for real right now? Like, this is crazy. And, like, in his mind, he has so much going on. He was just like... You know how sometimes you have, like, tragedies in your life? Like, something crazy will happen. I need to process this. Like, you need five minutes to process this. I think George Bush was just like, yo, I'm going to just say I'm going to read this book. Like, he just starts reading the book. He's like, listen, all right, five minutes of me reading this book is not going to change anything. All right? What do, you want to, what do you want me to do? You want me to go out there and catch the plane? I can't do anything. I'm going to read this book about a goat. I still remember the story. I think it has something to do with a goat. I'm going to read this book about the goat, and then I'm going to get the business. So he, George was sat there, right, and read the whole book, which is a children's book, so it wasn't very long. But he read the whole book, and he's like, listen, I'm calm, I'm cool, I'm collected. I'll handle this as I see fit. In reality, I think George Bush was just like, yo, I... Like, I, first of all, wait, there's a lot of things, that, there's a lot of things, now that I look at this video, there's a lot of things I don't understand. 
why didn't the Secret Service just pull George Bush out of there? Like, when did they, why didn't they just go, like, yo, you can't be here. Like, there's a terrorist attack. Like, maybe there's other planes coming. Like, why was, why did the Secret Service go up to him like he was his dad? He's like, yo, just so you know, there was a terrorist attack. And then, and then left it up to George Bush to be like, all right, um, well, I'm going to read this book really quick, and then I'm going to give it. But th that's what George Bush did, and people voted for him. People were like, yo, this guy can read a book in the face of, in the face of near tragedy, he's reading the book. And what's crazy is that not only did he read a book, which uh, which was great. Um, Reese, a little bit after this, this is this is right here cemented his reelection. If I was old enough to vote, I would have committed voter fraud and voted for him twice because this was his message to terrorist groups who dare threaten the American way of life. We must stop the terror. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. Yo, what terrorist is going to attack America after that? Like, low-key Al-Qaeda was thinking of, like, of doing uh, 9-12. Like, they're going to do some crazy thing. Like, we'll get them the day after. They'll never expect it. And then George Bush came out. He's like, yo, listen, I will hit your head like I hit this golf ball. And they backed up. They said, whoa, hold up. Yo, George Bush got that swag immaculate. Like, this is insane. Like, the fact that George Bush is, like, literally talking to the press and is like, all right, I'm going to go back to golf right now. Like, I remember, used to, I remember when Obama was president, he used to get criticized for golfing too much. Meanwhile, George Bush is talking about military actions and military events. And he's wearing khaki slacks and a polo. And he's like, listen, I know it's crazy out there, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to take care of business the same way I'm taking care of this course. I'm talking about hole in one, all 18 holes. Al-Qaeda, Shmal-Qaeda, they done, they dead. Uh, and, you know, in all fairness... This is not the uh, only thing that George Bush said or did uh, that struck fear into the heart of Al-Qaeda. He also went on some tangents. He also put out some threatening bars out there. Uh, I, I remember this video. This is like literally one of the most legendary quotes I've ever heard in my life. Every day I think about this. Now get me. Every day, well, every day I think about Al-Qaeda. Every day I think about protecting this country. I mean every day, except for Sunday. That is hilarious. Like if a terrorist heard that, they go, yo... Sunday, that's go time. But here's the thing that these idiots don't know. See, a lot of people would say, does George, does George Bush really take off of work on Sunday? Does he really not think about anything? Whether he did or didn't, Sunday's the Lord's Day, stupid. God will protect this nation. I'll tell you right now. What, what day? Yo, hold up. Watch it. Okay, Google. What day of the week was September 11th, 2001? September 11th, 2001, fell on a Tuesday. You see that? It was on a Tuesday. Now, if that shit was on a Sunday, Jesus Christ would have taken the fuck... He would have ripped his hands off the cross and hit those fucking planes like a baseball bat. But unfortunately, the fucking terrorists, they knew. They knew to hit it on a Tuesday. And not even a Saturday, because low-key Yahweh would have came in and protected us. But those pieces of shit came in on a Tuesday. Those mother... Those pieces of garbage. Uh, and here's the thing, right? Now, George Bush, he's a Christian man, if you didn't know. Uh, he relies on God, but at the same time, when the Lord tests him and when the Lord gives him a task, uh, much like uh, that one guy whose name I can't remember who had a bunch of riches and then God tested him with hardship and he still made it through. I think it was like Jacob or something. I don't remember. You know the Bible story. God was like, yo, this guy's super rich. Let's see what he's like when he's not rich, right? The Lord also tested George W. in a similar manner when he went to Iraq or some Middle Eastern country that I don't care about. And he was talking at a press conference, and during the press conference, like, someone in the audience was, like, basically so upset he threw shoes at George. Both of his, not one, both of his shoes. Like, do you understand? Like, this guy was so upset and so salty, he literally hit him with two shoes. Like, one wasn't enough. Now, here's the thing. George W. Bush, like, he's he got ultra instinct capabilities before ultra instinct existed, dodged it, looked back up and smiled. And here's the thing, George W. Bush wasn't even going to do anything. Like, George was going to be like, alright, you know, this guy's playing around, not a big deal. You already know that this dude, whether he's a journalist or not, my man going straight to Guantanamo Bay. This dude probably still in Gitmo right now. This is goddamn like 20 years later, and you know that guy's like getting electrocuted, waterboarded, and he couldn't even land a single shot. Like, you had a second chance, bro. Like, the first one, George Bush wasn't even, like, he was first of all, the first one was a better dodge than the second one because he wasn't even ready for the shoe. Like, he was, like, just getting ready for questions, thinking it was going to be nothing. That's a dodge, okay? That's not a, a miss. That's a dodge. Like, if George Bush didn't dodge that, look look at the trajectory of the shoe. It was going straight for his head, bro. I'm talking about a straight headshot. Bam. 
dodged it, can't hit me. Second one, you got a second chance, you still missed it, right? But, you know, all, all do is fair. Hopefully that was worth it. My man's in Gitmo right now. Hopefully he's doing okay. But the point is that George W. Bush is not only uh, physically capable, not only does he have the Lord on his side, not only does he take matters into his own hands when the Lord tells him to, he also has a way with words that is not known to many men uh, which depth upon me. And one thing that I still remember as a call from him is he was talking about how, like, Dude, he said something about um, getting fooled. It's that old saying of, like, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Very apropos, considering the fact that he just got hit by two shoes. First shoe, that could have hit. It wouldn't have been his fault. Second shoe, he definitely would have dodged. Either way, he dodged both. But George Bush goes on to take this quote and basically rejuvenate it with genius that really not many men could even think of. Aristotle's, Socrates... All these people could only dream of being as smart as George W. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. Dude, I love George Bush so yep. much. Dude, George Bush took 16 seconds to say like eight words. Like he just took such long pauses to say the dumbest shit. All right, listen. And not only is George Bush a pretty much a guaranteed like uh, public speaker, intelligent individual, a uh, physical phenomenon, uh, he also had some like weird. Um, he had some, like, I remember he had some weird controversy with Hurricane Katrina. Like, I, I don't know, like, for some reason people thought George Bush would actually do things a president is supposed to do. But, like, George Bush literally would just be president and be like, yo, hopefully, like, hopefully this works itself out. Like, I mean, hopefully FEMA's working. And at some point in time, like, Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana. A lot of people were affected by it. And George Bush was just so busy golfing and pretty much going on public speaking tours, reading books, that he forgot to maybe call FEMA, give them a ring, and be like, hey, by the way, can you go help these people in Katrina? And because of George Bush's uh, ignorance, or, or really, not really ignorance, it's so much bliss, you know what I mean? He was just so happy that he didn't even realize anything was going on. It, it bore this clip of Kanye West calling him out, which, you know, whether, whether you agree or disagree with George Bush, the fact that this exists is beautiful the less well off as slow as possible i mean this is red cross is doing everything they can we we already realize a lot of the people that could help are at war right now fighting another way and they they they've given them permission to go down and shoot us and subtle but in even many ways more profoundly devastating is the lasting damage to the survivors will to rebuild and remain in the area the destruction of the spirit of the people of southern louisiana and mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all george bush doesn't care about black people please call my favorite part of that clip is when they go to chris tucker look at dude Look at Chris Tucker's eyes, bro. Like, look at the way he's looking at Kanye. Like, he's in the other room, and he's just like, yo, Ye is tripping. Dude, this is one of the most legendary clips ever. Now, what Kanye was talking about in that clip, it's a little bit all over the place, but it is a common sentiment at the time. One thing that George Bush's presidency is kind of marred by, uh, a lot of people under Bush is marred by, is the Iraq War. Now, the Iraq War was basically a response to 9-11. Basically, people were pissed off. They're like, what the hell? You know, all these random Saudi Arabians flew their, you know, plane into our, our buildings. Like, what are we going to do? And then we're like, yo, hold up. Saudi Arabia got a lot of oil, but they also, you know what I mean? they political allies. Hold up. What's going on in Iraq over there? Yo, Saddam Hussein doing some crazy shit over there. Yo, Saddam, bro, you got to chill. Yo, Saddam, yo. And then, boom, that's it. War with Iraq. You know what I mean? Saddam didn't want to chill. A lot of people weren't really happy about the war two or three years in. Like, in the beginning of the war, every American supported it. Like, if you were anti-war, you were anti-America. Like, they were literally spit in your face, right? But then a couple years went by and they're like, yo, like, why are we in Iraq? Like, there's no weapons. There's, like, really nothing going on over there. I mean, are we getting oil? That's great. But, like, what is going on? So what Kanye brings up there is the whole idea that, you know, we're spending money on war. We're not spending money on other people. But here's the thing. Kanye West would be wrong. And the reason why he'd be wrong is because George Bush ended up giving a mission accomplished speech 
Like, I don't know, what was this, 2003? And when, the, when was Katrina? When was Katrina? So Hurricane Katrina was in 2005. George Bush gave the Mission Accomplished speech in 2003. Yo, Kanye, bro, how are we fighting a war if we had the Mission Accomplished speech? Now, there's nothing, nothing against Kanye. You know what I mean? I love Donda. Donda, too. I didn't have enough money for the STEM player. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate that. But you know what? George Bush, he dropped the Mission Accomplished speech. It's great. I don't know what we talk about, yay. There ain't no war to complain about. And to be fair, right, not a lot of people supported the war. Not a lot of people were messing with it. But after the war, George Bush basically went on a tour talking about his new book. It's called Portraits of Courage. And a paint, my attitude. And I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, George Bush is probably, like, one of the most likable people. Like, you just listen to him talk, and you're like, yo, like, I'll vote for this guy. It was a Churchill campaign. I can paint. So I hired an instructor. She was a little apprehensive. She said, what's your objective? I said, there is a Rembrandt trapped in this body. And your job is to find him. But you know, George, you were pretty crazy as a president. I'm not going to lie. The economy took a hit. But you, no one can talk like you. No one can say the dumb things you say and then put on a smile. And I was like, I, I love this. I'm going to vote for him again. I'm a, yo, you don't understand. Everybody hated George Bush, but they could not not vote for him. Like, do you get that? Do you understand no one thought he was a good president, but no one could not vote for him? Like, if McCain ran for president, I think they would have to vote for Bush, because, like, yeah, we already had Bush. You know what I mean? He did a good enough job. And McCain is, like, a war general, but, like, can he can he say funny things like Bush? I don't think so. Like, you can't beat George Bush. This dude was a Republican powerhouse, right? And this whole campaign that he's talking about after... Um, you know, retiring and after Time. becoming older is basically Portraits of Courage, which was his attempt at, I guess, kind of making amends with the Iraq War. I mean, he basically just went around painting a bunch of veterans and different individuals that were in the Iraq War, people who were hurt or a part of the military during his time as president. Uh, and, it, and it's pretty admirable, you know what I mean? Like, the president can only do so much, uh, and no one really wants to go to war. I mean, granted, the Iraq War, I mean, it's pretty much one of the more bigger blunders of recent years but it's easy to say that now at the time everyone supported it and the fact that george bush is going around paying random people and is like yeah you know lol i'm pretty old and here's painting rembrandt and people are like oh that's pretty funny oh by the way veterans exist you know it's not that bad he's a nice guy and i'm not gonna lie to you like as much as i joke him around as, as much as i say um like george bush is nuts george bush is crazy I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. This dude, like, if you watch George Bush's uh, speech at his dad's funeral, this is legit, like, one of the most depressing videos. Like, this is really, like, like you. this is probably one of his best speeches. Uh, it's not his president. It's, it's here. He does a great job. He's talking about patriotism. He's talking about the fact that his dad was such a, like, bad... Like, dude, his dad was head of the CIA, became president after Richard... Uh, not Richard. Well, technically, yeah, he did become president after Richard Nixon, but after Reagan... Uh, and he was like a gigantic American figure. I mean, George Bush Sr. is like one of the, He was part of the Gulf War. He was part of a lot of things. He basically shaped a lot of conservative America at that point in time. Basically picked up the torch that Reagan lit and kept going with it. Um, and he talks about his dad. It's a really good video. It makes me uh, remember why I wanted Jeb Bush to be president. Dude, Jeb Bush is probably the greatest thing other than george bush that's why i was so upset when donald trump like basically destroyed jeb bush's chances at presidency like it was so depressing uh but all in all george bush he's a great president he's a great guy i think that he's an example of unification in the nation i think that under george bush everyone hated him so no one hated each other like no you know what i mean racism didn't exist i think it, i think it was when george bush was on his way out that's when kramer went on the n-word rant that's when all things started going crazy like george bush leaving the presidency was like when kratos opened pandora's box like it basically let all the evil out and it went away i mean we should have just done an fdr with george bush and be like yo listen george you already got us in a war. You already tanked the economy. Like, what else can you do? Give this dude another four. Let him go till 2012. You know what I mean? Get all the evil out. But, unfortunately, we actually had to, you know, get Barack Obama, who was, like, actually qualified for the job. He kind of knew what he was doing. Uh, you know, but he wore that tan suit. I'll be honest with you. That's a big blunder. Tan suit? Uh, unprofessional. Um, but, all in all, I think that as much as we may dislike George Bush, as much as we may say... That he's pretty crazy, pretty kooky. I think a lot of people at the end of the day like the guy, love him. 
And you gotta admit, uh, George Bush, probably not the best president, but at least it wasn't Dick Cheney. Dude, Dick Cheney literally shot a guy in the face and then had the guy apologize to him. Imagine him as president. Bro, Dick Cheney would have dropped a nuke in Iraq, bro. You don't mess with Dick Cheney. I'm gonna be honest with you, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the economy is garbage. Uh, the recession is right around the corner. Hopefully, I can get a promotion so that my money can stay stagnant. Uh, and remember, at the end of the day, no matter who you vote for, it is going to go down. It's going to go south. But if we can elect someone that we all hate, maybe there's a chance at unity. At the end of every single video, make sure you ask people to rate and subscribe to your content. It makes them feel like they're involved even though they're really not. And most importantly, make sure they comment on every single video. If you have to, disguise it. You know, call it something like the question of the day. And really make them think you're going to really read it when you really don't have to. Ha ha ha!